Okay, we forgot to turn on one phone. The Bible teaches that, you know, this is the, Jesus said this is the beginning of sorrows. It's already beginning today. And then John said, the Antichrist is already working today, deceiving many. That's why there's many religions, right? There's false gospels, counterfeit, self-deceived Christians. Amen. Well, by the way, uh, if you haven't heard on our chat, I posted the testimony of fake Christians who got saved. And look at their faces. They're crying. They're, they're so grateful that God opened their eyes. You know, their testimony, they say they thought for the last 20 years they were Christians because they went to church. One was even a pastor. And then some of them said, I, I prayed the sinner's prayer. And they thought they were Christians because they were connected to a church. But you know, when God convicted them after 10 years, 20 years, they're crying, they're sharing their testimony, they're saying, we really thought we were Christians. But they were living in sin. During those years, they were living in sin. You know. And, wala siya ng pakialam sa Diyos. No conviction. But they consider themselves Christians. I don't think you will disagree with that. Every church has this. It's in, our, it's in every church backyard. Every church community will have. Because Jesus said the wheat and the tares will grow together. Jesus, they will grow together. But in the end times, it, they will be separated. So, Increased deception already happening now. Increased tribulation. But the Bible points to the great tribulation. Okay? In Revelation, in the future. The tribulation, the greatest, the final tribulation will be seven years before Jesus comes. Okay? Seven years before Jesus comes from, from heaven in the clouds, riding a white horse. Seven years before he's coming, say he's coming 2022, 2015 will be the beginning of tribulation. Okay, that will be the introduction. The Antichrist will be introduced into the world. First three and a half years, he will be like President of the United States, charismatic. He will win the hearts of many. Right? Remember how Bobo Marcos won the hearts of many? Uh, Trump, you know, he'll be a great politician. The first three and a half years, he will solve the economic problems of the world. All the, maybe some pestilences, some incurable diseases, he will fix the problems of the world. And people will support him. The whole world will follow him. Because the first three and a half years, he will be a great man, uh, he will appear righteous. There will be no hint of satan, satanic behavior. There will be no hint. You will never tell. When you first meet the, the Antichrist, he will be the most gentle person on earth. Gentleman, smooth talker, charismatic, uh, super leader, smart, intelligent. You, there's nothing you can do, you can find to fault him. That's why people will buy into his economic, political solutions. Okay? People will buy. And then Christians will argue. Some of your children will say, no, he's not the Antichrist. When he starts introducing the mark, some Christians will receive it. And they will get mad at you. Remember what Jesus said in Luke, even your own children... Your brother, your sister, they will turn you in. They will turn you in. They will report you to the Antichrist, to the one world government. See, once the deception kicks in, people will be divided. Some discerning Christians will refuse to receive any mark because they know it. If somebody says to me, I'll give you a million dollars. I will plant a, a small microchip in, under your skin. You can have your one million. Okay? 
So, because I, I know the Bible, you know, what if this is the mark? I don't need it, right? It's the temple of the Holy. But some will say, well, this is the new technology, right? And they will, because without it, they cannot buy, they cannot eat, they cannot work, they cannot travel. Paano naman kung umuwi ako ng Pilipinas? Ayun pa isang problema. Di ba? Hindi ka makakauwi ng Pilipinas without the mark. So remember, you cannot buy bread, you cannot work. Oh. It's going to be a big headache. The houses will be divided, families will be divided over this. Amen? If Christians were divided on Halloween, on, on the COVID vaccine, this will be a major division. Okay? So, first three and a half years, you know, he perhaps the mark of the 666 is the solution to a, let's introduce a better system. Now we can trap every single person on this planet. Wherever they go, we, we know where they are. Okay? Of course, if you're a senior and uh, you're alone, it's good for you because if you have a heart attack, they will know it. Yeah, you will get it, right? Because it's good for you. But what if that's the mark of the beast? See, that's one of the advantages. If you get lost in the mountains, they can find you. See, so many advantages. That's why it's deception. Right? People who are deceived really believe in what they're getting until it's too late. Amen? They will believe in it. They will defend it. They will promote it. And they will turn on anyone who is against it. Remember, the Antichrist is charismatic. There's nothing satanic about him until it's too late. Amen? I believe mid, so that would be the Bible points to a greater tribulation. That would be the, the, the tribulation of all tribulations. The mother of all tribulations will happen during that seven years before the second coming. At midpoint, after three and a half years, after three and a half years, his true colors will come out. His true colors will come out. That's when he will declare himself God, right? And then he will create an idol image where everybody must worship that idol image, right? And those who have received the mark, there's no way you can reject it because he, you, by receiving that mark, you already belong to satanic worship. There's nothing you can do. It's too late. You already received it. Can fake Christians who receive the mark repent? No. You will not, they will not repent. They're given over to deception. Remember, in Revelation it says, those who receive the mark, the Antichrist, the false prophet, they were all burnt forever and ever in the lake of fire. Those who received the mark were burnt alive in the lake of fire. There is no hope for Salvation when you receive the mark. Right? Because here's how they're going to think. Oh, I'm still a Christian. Right? Well, I can still do this and still be a Christian. See, the question is, are you a saved Christian? How can you be saved when you belong to the devil when you accepted the mark of the beast? Right? Uh, Thessalonians tells us that God will give them over to a strong deception. In other words, God will give them over. God will hand them in because that's what they wanted. You think God will, will grab you by the collar and say, don't receive that mark. No. You want it, you'll get it. God will give them strong delusion in Thessalonians. 
God will turn them over, will hand them in. See, that's right. When God abandons people, that's terrible. When you cross the line and God abandons you, you're given over to the devil. That's it. So anyway, I know this topic is not popular nowadays because the world doesn't talk about negativity in the future. Right? They want to talk about tribulation. The world hates it, this kind of talk. But this is the Bible. Jesus talked about it in Matthew 23, 24. John, the Apostle John, wrote about it in Revelation. So it's the Bible. We have to read it and believe it. Amen? Yes, I know the world will get worse. The world will get worse. I know that. Amen? I'm ready for that. Okay? So, after the seven years, Jesus will come again riding a white horse. Okay? There will be a war, in it, war on this planet. The, the armies of the Antichrist will battle against Jesus riding on a white horse. And Jesus will also return with his army. And some theologians are saying that could be the raptured Christians returning with Jesus Christ. And Jesus will destroy the enemy, the Antichrist, all everything that is wicked, everything that is unrighteous. Jesus will destroy with the fire that comes from his mouth. All the birds of the air will eat billions and billions of people, dead people. I believe Jesus riding on a white horse will execute his wrath and his judgment on this wicked world. Everybody will die. Right? Can God kill? But do you think the story of Noah? Yeah, he can drown. He can drown you to death if he wants. And he did it in old deal. Well, you know, I don't, this is not popular again. Now that I, I have a lot of enemies now on YouTube. Because they don't like this message. Hey, MacArthur preaches on this. Amen. Okay, that's, but you know, there is a price to pay for peace. The Bible also talks about the 1,000 year reign of Jesus Christ. It's called the millennial kingdom. For 1,000 years, it will be a kingdom of peace and righteousness where Jesus will rule the earth. He will rule the earth with the believers. Remember, he will return with the raptured, raptured, not raptured, raptured Christians, and we will rule the earth for a thousand years. Okay? And after a thousand years, the new heavens and the new earth will come. I mean, that's a long story to unfold. But where are we? in the point of prophecy. Where are we now at the point of prophecy? We're, we're, we're much closer to the end than a hundred years ago. Right? We are much, much closer to the end than a hundred years ago. Because now I'm preaching here, the gospel is reaching every creature now. Right? This is part of the prophecy too. These gospels will be preached to all the world, to every creature, then the end will come. It's possible now because of technology, internet, right? Satellite TV. You know, I have a TV8 for free. I don't pay anything for it. Amen? Praise God. That's technology. Amen. So, yeah, the, the rumors of war, China, Taiwan, Russia, Ukraine, we're, we're much closer. Famines, well, there's all kinds of famines, covid Pestilences. Deception, well, it's all over the place. Deception, the spirit of the Antichrist is already at work. Many are already deceived. Today you can be a Christian and uh, you can believe in the LBGT gospel. You can believe in a feminist gospel. You can believe in a liberal gospel. You can believe in a prosperity gospel. How come 
there's so many gospel. Which one does it, is the true gospel that will set you free? Which one is the saving gospel? It's so confusing. Right? And there's all kinds of false teachers. Today, if I talk about Stephen Furtick, a lot of people will get angry at me. Fortnick. Fortnick. Is it Furtick? Furtick. Furtick, I don't know, whatever. But teaching a man-centered gospel. A man-centered gospel, you know. You know what that is? It's a prosperity gospel. It's a self-help, psychology, power, positive thinking, man-centered gospel. I mean, the gospel that I know for 30 years is Christ-centered. Amen? Not man-centered. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the deception is here. All the signs that Jesus said in Matthew 24 is already here. Amen? So let's read more scriptures. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, I believe the next event... The rapture is not too far from now. That will be the next major event. If you are a pre-trib, pre-tribulation, if you have hold the pre-tribulation, uh, pre-millennial uh, rapture, um, for some are post-tribs. My son doesn't believe in the rapture, but they, that's fine. He's also into apologetics. Well, we had a discussion over this. That's fine. Uh, it's no big deal. Uh, the, the rapture, I believe, the rapture is the next major event. So you get, you better be saved today, because if you don't get raptured, you will be here in the tribulation. That's why it's pre-tribulation rapture, rapture before the tribulation, right? Uh, if you don't get saved today, you know, you'll be here in the tribulation. Mm -hmm. That means you will have to deal with the Antichrist. You will have to make a decision whether to receive the mark or not. Whether to lay your head on the chopping board or not. Wow, you will have to abandon your house and run to the mountains. That's what Jesus said. Just like in Ukraine. Abandon cities and towns. Millions of people left their homes. Like tribulation. I can't really promise you that your life will get better in the future. 50 years from now, 100 years. It's going to get worse. That's what the Bible says. Because the Antichrist will come. Also, I believe this is Satan's final attack on God and the believers. Remember, this is a spiritual battle right from the beginning. A spiritual warfare. And this will be the round 12 of this spiritual fight between God and Satan. This will be round 12. Mm -hmm. Right until the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. uh, I pity the, the... I don't know what's going to happen to consumer Christians. Because if they're looking for comfort, there will be no comfort and luxury in these days. It's all about tribulation and hardship. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's not going to be good for them too. You know. Amen? Mm -hmm. We're not consumer Christians, right? Thank you, Lord. Are you? No. Or not? I endured 30 years of low income for this career. You, what have you done? Right? What have you endured? And people keep attacking me. What have they done? Mm -hmm. Nothing. They just use their mouths. Right? I mean, I'm sorry. It's the end of the world. It's coming soon. That's why I better be tough. We all have to repent and be saved. That's the bottom line. If you're a, a fake Christian, you better repent. Right? Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay, let's read now. I know this is not popular nowadays. True genuine evangelists will be persecuted in the last days. That's what I'm trying to say. They will be hunted down. 
in the tribulation. Okay, let's read again Revelation chapter 14. Okay, while the Antichrist is busy, you know, majority of the world have already received the mark. You know, the, Sant the Antichrist have already established himself, declared himself God. The system is already working. Uh, chapter 14, verse 1. It's not the end of evangelism. God's going to keep fighting. Amen. Uh, not because the Antichrist is in control means all evangelism will die. No. God is also busy. <laughs> Amen. The Bible, Revelation 14, talks about the 144,000 evangelists. I wish I was one of them. In the tribulation. Amen. Yeah, in the tribulation. Amen. <clears throat> then I looked and behold a lamb standing on Mount Zion, Revelation 14, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard the voice from heaven, like the voice of many waters, like the voice of a loud thunder, and I heard the sound of harpists playing their harps. And they sang, as it were, a new song before the throne, before the four living creatures and elders, and no one could learn that song except the 144,000 who, who were redeemed from the earth. These are the ones who were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. They were redeemed from among men, being first fruits to God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Well, some are saying these are 144,000 evangelists from the, you know, these, are, these will be Jewish people. Actually, earlier in Revelation, it also talks about the two witnesses in Revelation 11. Uh, who are the two witnesses? Well, some are saying that's Elijah coming back again to evangelize. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Mm -hmm. But they are all, the two witnesses are powerful evangelists as well. Could it be Elijah? You know, the two witnesses can shut down rain, you know. They can declare starvation, famine. They can declare drought by stopping the rain, just like how Elijah stopped the rain, right? And there was drought. And then Elijah declared, let it rain, and it rained. So the two witnesses are evangelists who have the power to create disasters and even to kill their enemies. And when the forces of the Antichrist try, tries to hunt them, the two witnesses will just kill them. Mm, they have perhaps fire coming out of their mouth like a flamethrower. Read Revelation 11, chapter 11. Plus the 144,000 who, whom I also believe is fiery, powerful evangelists and they will also be indestructible. They will have some sort of supernatural protection. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Why? Because during that three and a half years, millions of souls will still come to the Lord Jesus. The two witnesses, the 144,000, perhaps they will use the internet, they will carry Pixel 6, just like what I do. <laughs> Amen. Google phone. Whenever they are, they'll just vlog, you know, <laughs> to the world, just like what I'm doing. Everybody has cell phones. Amen. Yeah. The two witnesses was 144,000. Preaching on their phones, on the internet, using satellite TV and calling fire from heaven. Well, Hallelujah. the world will believe them. Hmm. Amen. Praise God. Many, many people will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. They will believe the gospel. Of course, because this is a spiritual battle, there will be forces loyal to the Antichrist, the faith Christians, the consumer Christians who have already accepted the mark. Because they love comfort, they love luxury, they love convenience, and they're not willing to pay the price of discipleship, they ended up in the hands of Satan. Yeah. They're already bought into the system of the Antichrist. There's nothing that's irreversible. And they will change loyalty and allegiance. They will pledge loyalty with the Antichrist. Eventually, they will be Satan, Satan worshippers. 
they will all together, you know, give up whatever form of fake Christianity they have and declare themselves loyalists to the Antichrist. They will worship the idol, the beast. Remember, the Antichrist will have an idol. Everybody must worship the idol, right? Like what the book and Esther did with the golden image. Everybody at the sound of the harp, harp and musical instruments, everybody bows down. So, yeah. The only saved people are the genuine people. The only genuine people are the saved people. Mm. Those who have been born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, and they're willing to give their lives for Jesus Christ. They're willing to get executed, beheaded for the gospel, for Jesus Christ. Because they're genuinely, genuinely saved. No genuine Christian will worship the devil. No genuine Christian will worship luxury, comfort, and convenience. Mm -hmm. Right? What do they do on Sundays? Even if it's snowing, thundering, blistering, there's a blizzard, whatever, they'll go to church. Amen. 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 They're sick, they're going to tune in. Amen. And listen, that's why I love vlogging ministry. I love my job because whoever is hungry, they will tune in. If they're not hungry, they're not going to tune in. Mm. In church, sometimes you, you know, it's hard to get away with people because you have open doors for everyone and not everyone is hungry. Sometimes that's the case, right? But you know, during the time of the Antichrist, there will be only two camps. It's so either you belong to the Antichrist or you belong to Christ. There will be no middle ground. Yeah. Today there is a middle ground. Yeah. You know, Christians who are unsaved, they have that comfortable middle ground. They can still go to church and serve in the ministry. Yeah. Self-deceived. But... During the time of the Antichrist, it's either you have the mark or you don't. There's only two choices. Amen? So, the, the consumer uh, Christian who worships convenience will have to make a choice. It's going to be tough. He cannot stay on the middle neutral ground. He will have to make a choice. Amen? So, but there will be thousands, millions who will get saved because of the 144,000 evangelists and the two witnesses. Plus, there's an angel flying around this planet, hovering all over this planet, preaching the gospel. Mm. An angel. Praise God. Amen? Amen? Look at this, verse 6. And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. Wow, the everlasting gospel. This is not the prosperity gospel. Amen. This is not the man centered gospel. This is not the LBGT gospel. This is not the liberal gospel. This is the gospel that Paul preached, you know, where Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, The gospel that I have received, I give unto you, that Christ died for sinners, and on the third day he rose again. That's the eternal gospel. That's the gospel I preach. Amen. Christ died for sinners. Today's gospel, they want to remove that word sinners. No, Jesus did not die for sin. Jesus died for everyone. Universalism. We're all, we are, we're all going to heaven. Sinners, even unrepentant sinners, are going to heaven. See, that's a fake gospel. This angel will hover all over this planet from nation to nation. Preaching the everlasting gospel to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. What do you think this angel will preach? 
God wants to make you rich. Give your tithes. God wants you to be successful and happy. Man-centered gospel. Mm -hmm. You are little gods. Do you know, don't you know you are little gods? Little God theology. You are like Him. Satan's like to eat. Because when you eat this fruit, you shall be like Him. You want to believe that? Do you think this angel will talk about feminism and sexism and prosperity? No, this angel will preach, repent, believe, and be saved. Repent of your sins. The Antichrist is here. The Antichrist will kill you. The Antichrist will persecute you. The Antichrist will behead you. If you don't receive the mark, you will die. Therefore, believe in the Lord Jesus. That's the message of this angel. An angel flying, preaching to every nation, tongue, tribe, and people. Saying with a loud voice, verse 7, Fear God and give glory to Him. For the hour of His judgment has come. Amen. And worship Him who made the heaven and the earth, the sea and the springs of water. You know what His message is? The hour of judgment has come. The Antichrist is here. Today if I preach this, the hour of judgment has come. You know what the consumer Christians will do? They will just look at me like this. They will even argue with me. They will even debate. Well, I've debated five years now. Online. Apologetics. There are a lot of Christians who will hate this message. To tell you honestly. They don't believe in the book of Revelation. This is just imagery for them. This is not true. Liberal theology. Everyone will get saved. God is love. Okay, let's keep reading, okay? Fear God for judgment has come. Amen. Verse 9, Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image, and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. Well, there's one angel preaching the gospel all over the world. And then there's a, another angel preaching hell, fire, and brimstone. Well, this is a different angel now. The third angel in verse 9 is not the same angel on verse 6. Okay? These are three different angels. The first angel preaching in, across the globe, every tribe, nation, uh, preaching uh, judgment. The third angel um, warning the world, specifically, directly, if anyone worships the beast, this is his message, and his image, 
If you receive the mark on your head, on your, on your, on your hand, you will drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which God will pour out in full strength uh, because of His indignation. And you shall be tormented with fire and brimstone forever and ever without end. There will be no rest day or night. Verse 11. Because you worship the beast and his image. Whoever receives the mark of his name. So one angel preaching judgment. First angel calling people to repent, fear God. The third angel preaching about the Antichrist, warning people about the Antichrist. Directly, if you receive the mark, you will be burnt in hell. Yes. Well, I wish that's the message that God called me to preach. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say every Sunday. But if you love money, if you worship the devil, if you don't repent and believe, you will go to hell. <laughs> Imagine if that's all I'm preaching every day. <laughs> wow, I love to do that. I have the personality to do that. That's who I am. I don't play with words. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I'm not a man pleaser. This is how God created me. You've got enemies. That's why I have a lot of enemies. <laughs> As I preach the truth. Yeah. I belong to the future. You know that? <laughs> I don't belong to this generation. I belong to the future. That's where I'm ministering right now. <laughs> Amen? Praise God. Well, you know, this won't make sense. When, when Noah preached about the flood, people were mocking him. This is a desert. Yeah. Can you imagine if Noah was preaching destruction and flood and the floods were coming? Right? From miles and miles away, you see the floods. The tsunami is coming. You're going to be running towards the, the ark, right? But that, that won't be repentance. <laughs> fear. That we have nothing to do with God. It will be fear and prosperity. You know? yeah. Comfort and convenience. It's not about repentance. I want to run to the ark because of comfort. Yeah. Because of convenience. Because of safety. Because of protection. Mm. I want a God who will give me those things. Mm. They're not interested in repentance. In a personal relationship with God, in true worship. Those are the people that will be deceived. Yeah. Amen. But you know, in, in, in the time of the Antichrist, it will have this message of if you don't, if you, if you receive the mark, you will go to hell. It will make sense. If you receive the mark, you will go to hell. Because the Antichrist will be there imposing the mark on every person. Hmm. Right? Hmm. Amen. Of course, there will be those who will still defend it. Just like how they defended the, the vaccines. <laughs> yeah. They will defend it. The yeah. mark is good. It's been proven. It's been scientifically <laughs> proven. proven, you know. <laughs> it works. You know, throw away that Nexus card, you know. Nexus. Well, I have a Nexus card. I don't line up at the border. Well, you know, if you have the mark, everything is instant and easy. Convenient. Yeah. Convenient. Mm -hmm. Amen? So there will be those who will defend it. I love this battle because the angel will keep saying, if you receive the mark, you will go to hell. <laughs> While people are lining up for their marks, the angel is praying, if you receive that mark, you will go to hell. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah! Uh -huh. I love that. I want to belong to that generation. No way. <laughs> I love conflicts. I love hostilities. I love preaching to death. I don't belong here. 
Honestly. I would rather minister in the time of crisis like that than the past 30 years where I've been. But it's done. Amen? But all things have a purpose in God. I wouldn't be this blunt and bold if not because of my past. Amen? This is the only way God can make me what I am and who I am today. Amen. It's a new day for me. Amen. Amen? That's why this building, I'm not afraid. God will demolish this building. I prophesy in two years this building will be demolished. <laughs> because they already applied. The owner already applied for a license. <laughs> to demolish them. To build a hotel here. Mm. Amen? <laughs> Praise God, that's freedom for all of us, isn't it? I'm free. I'll be free. Amen. Amen. I want to be like Paul. The last two years of his life, he, he was under house arrest in Rome as a prisoner. And the people, there was a, a guard watching him. You can't go anywhere, Paul. Hmm. But we'll let your visitors come in <laughs> and talk to you. What a stupid mistake, sorry. <laughs> the undercover, you know, spy. The most controversial preacher of his time preached the gospel, the things regarding the kingdom of God to all his visitors, to everyone who is hungry for the truth that came to his house. He welcomed them for two full years. Read Acts 28. Without anyone forbidding him, Anyone preventing him. Mm -hmm. That's a house church. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Free, yeah. Did you not know that Paul was more free inside the house church than when he was preaching in crusades in every city? He was more effective as under house arrest. Because every time he preached in cities, there's always a riot. Right? Mm -hmm. well, half of the multitudes wanted to kill him. Yeah. When half gets saved. <laughs> there's revival, there's a riot. They drag him, they stone him. But here, under house arrest, I have someone protecting me. You know, the guards. <laughs> no one could stop his mouth. No one could throw stones at him. No one could say to him, Stop! Paul, stop! He freely preached the gospel for two full years. Amen. So when we leave this building, we are free. When we move to my house, we are freer than the past. Nasa bahay kita. You better behave and listen. No mountain business here. We have Tim Horton there. If you want to socialize, you can go to Tim Horton. If you're hungry for the word, you're in the right place. Okay, Bayon? Amen! Yes, brother? Amen! I'll be more freer to preach the word without anyone restricting me, persecuting me, name calling me. Can you say amen? Amen! You know, I also learned that the church is not about numbers. You know, the prosperity churches, they are after the numbers. You know, the, 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 the church in Acts 20, 20, it just from house to house. Amen? We can be more effective in the house. And it doesn't have to be 100 people. 12 people, 20 people can plant churches in the Philippines. Amen? In 24 hours, 12 people donated $900. Within 24 hours, we have money in Samar. Victims of the disaster within 24 hours are receiving relief. 
Because if you give me, if you give your money now, we're gonna send it by a Western Union. They will get it there and they will the shop same, right away. The same day. 24 hours within 24 hours. Amen. Bagong generation na po ito. We're free. We're a new. We're a movement. We're a society. Amen. Amen. We are a society. A mission society. I'm an evangelist now. Buksan niyo na ang mga mata niyo. This is the Lord. new thing for 2023. Amen. Yes. Yes. The day of our incorporation is coming near. Officially, legally. Amen. So, you know what I see here? God is interested in the end times. The major activity of the church is evangelism. 144,000 evangelists, not pastors, evangelists. The two witnesses, maybe one of them is Elijah, Moses, maybe. Maybe Moses, too. Yeah. Moses. Oh, yeah. You better be afraid of him. Satan is afraid of him. The Pharaoh trembled at Moses, right? Because he destroyed Egypt. Can yeah. you imagine if they return here, Elijah and Moses, <laughs> preaching to the world? My God. It will be the most exciting time in history, isn't it? It's a revival. Plus the 144,000. You know the major activity of the church in the end time is evangelism. That's not it. socializing. That's it, yeah. Amen. There's no time to socialize. To tell you honestly, because yeah. believers are always on the run. You know. Hmm. Maybe I'll see you running this way, and I'm running that way. The next time I see you again will be after nine months. <laughs> There's not even time to sit together and yeah. drink coffee and fellowship and mm -hmm. have a party. Because mm -hmm. we're all outlaws. Amen. Running for Church will be banned, illegal, closed, buildings destroyed. There'll be no Bibles, maybe. No. Yeah. So? Memorize so. now. <laughs> you want to belong to that generation? Let's go. Have a time machine travel, you know? Let's travel into the future. Take me out of this. Mm. Amen. Mm. You know, when I feel sometimes I'm inside a burning building, I just say to God, just bring me somewhere else, like Philip the Evangelist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen, or Elijah, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what God is doing, I believe. Amen. Leading us to a new journey in life. So yeah, that's the angel, two angels preaching all over the world. The 140 for all the major activity of the church. In the end time, in the time of the Antichrist, is evangelism. That's why Jesus said, this gospel, Matthew 24, this message of the gospel shall be preached to every creature, and then the end will come. Hallelujah. That's how I see it. So here's how we're going to close. What will happen to the Antichrist and the beast? Well, the third angel, okay, uh, said that, you know, where is that? Well, this is another, it's in Genesis 19. <laughs> we have to go to another chapter. But there's a warning here in verse 11. The smoke of their torment will ascend forever and ever. They will have no rest day and night who worship the beast and his image and whoever receives the mark of of his name. So warning to those who receive and worship the beast who receive the mark, they will be burned in hell. Revelation, uh, I believe 19, another angel will capture the, the Antichrist and the beast and they will be thrown into the lake of fire. Verse 20, Revelation 19, verse 20, then the beast was captured and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence by which he deceived those who received the mark. See, they deceived those who received the mark, the mark of the beast, and those who worship his image, those who worship the Antichrist were deceived. 
Satan deceived them. The Antichrist deceived them. The false prophet deceived them. Amen. These two were cast alive. So they were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. Well, this, this will happen at the second coming of Jesus. There will be a battle here between Jesus and the Antichrist. Jesus' army and the army of the Antichrist. Multitudes, millions of people will die. All flesh shall be dead. That's why the birds of the air will eat the flesh. Right? The vultures will eat the flesh of all men. This planet will be littered with dead people. Wow. Okay? We're going to study this next week. The second coming of Christ. Continuation. You know, God will call the birds of the air to eat the flesh of dead people. Wow. Right? And then, you know, at the second coming too, the two, the false prophet, the Antichrist, were captured. Where are they heading? They will be cast into the lake of fire. I know this is not a popular message, so people may be mocking me right now. You're talking things that are insane, that are crazy, you're, you've lost your sanity. Pastor Alvin, you have lost your sanity. You, you better take your medicine. You <laughs> must have dementia. some chemical imbalance in your brain. <laughs> or dementia. <laughs> Maybe they're mocking. Well, it's fine, you know. Deception is already working right now. If you're mocking the truth because you are deceived. Yeah. Amen? Thank you, Lord. But the warning is, if you worship the devil, see, here's how I'll say it. If you do not repent, believe in the Lord Jesus, you will worship the devil. You will receive the mark of the Antichrist. What would be your final destination? Cebu. <laughs> Cebu? No. Samar? No. <laughs> La Union Beach? No. The Lake of Fire. The Lake of Fire. Those who receive the mark worship of the devil will be thrown into the Lake of Fire where the smoke will never quench day in, day out. There will be no rest day and night where the smoke never ends. The smoke of their torment will never end forever and ever, day and night. It will be everlasting, eternal, eternal. conscious. I say conscious. You're conscious yeah. You'll be alive. Because today there are those the theology that's called annihilationism. No. Or you will no. cease to exist. That's another topic of debate. Mm -hmm. But I believe people will be consciously alive. You have an eternal soul that will never die. It's either it will be with God in heaven or in hell with Satan forever and ever. You will not cease or stop existing. You'll be conscious in all your life, either in heaven or in hell. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We give you all the glory. I know that we talked about difficult messages and maybe the world will say, well, we already have a war. Things are already hard. People are already suffering and plus you're giving us this message. Well, you know why I'm preaching this message? Because I believe the Bible. Because I believe our only hope is in Jesus Christ. Jesus said, this world will come to an end. There will be tragedies and tribulation because it must come to an end before he can finally introduce peace for a thousand years, the new heavens and the new earth. Wickedness must first be removed, annihilated, eliminated from this planet and it will be removed the hard way. You know, God will wipe out this world, will purge this world the hard way. But there will be mercy and grace, forgiveness to those who believe in the Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that many believe in the name of Jesus because you died for our sins to save us from this wrath. Because we believe those who are saved were not appointed to suffer wrath under the hand of the Antichrist. 
your hand of protection shall be upon them. Because you have predestined them to reign with you forever and ever in all eternity. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for listening. Special shout outs. Thank you. I see some names. Whether you watch for an hour or one minute. Thank you. I see the names here. Jordan Linen, Rod Guevara. Uh, my classmate in Bible school. Kim Hotchkiss from Honduras. Thank you for watching. Sister Chona. Uh, our church in the Philippines. Thank you for watching. Balogo, Asingan, and Samar Church. Thank you for everyone who will tune in later this afternoon. Thank you for supporting this channel and this ministry. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. See you next Sunday again. Praise God. Follow me on YouTube and Facebook. God bless you. Amen. Thank you to our special in-person attendees. Thank you for coming. Amen.